In this video, I am designing and producing custom parts to make Samurai Tao, all powered by today's sponsor, MSI. If you've been following our channel, you might have seen my custom Tau before. They're called the Sakura Sept, Tau born in orbital platforms and between worlds who have a strong samurai theme. They hold the fellowship between their brothers and sisters above all else and fight nobly in the close confines of boarding actions. Previously to make my samurai themed Tau, I had used a whole bunch of other people's mini bits and mini parts. But I've been getting a lot of practice with 3D modeling, and today I think it's time to make my own custom Tau Sakura bits. And these parts will all be available at the end of the video. But that means while I'm sculpting on my laptop, I'm gonna need some help. So I'm gonna get Murray and Jen to paint me up some Tau Sakura. So if Dave's making a series of bits that other people are to use, the challenge is gonna be, we get to test them out. So we're gonna make our own Sakura infantry. We've got Dave's old star collecting box of Tau, so we're gonna make a handful of fire warriors and breaches and to test out the bits for ourselves. And to really put the pressure on Dave, I'm gonna try and make a Kadra fire blade to see if I can really push his designs to the limit. Murray and Jen are hard at work making some Tau and I've got to admit, I'm a bit nervous. This is actually my first time sculpting infantry bits that other people are going to use. So I'm gonna try my absolute best to push myself to the limits and make some really cool stuff today. Not only that, I don't want to make parts that are completely derivative. I want to make something that is purely my own. So I'm making cherry blossom themed samurai parts. So while today we are going to be using them on Tau models, I'm designing these so they could be used on any miniatures and they're completely war game agnostic. When I think of samurai, one of the immediate visual cues I get is that large shoulder pad made of interlaced steel plates. So that's where I'm going to start today. I went through a bit of an iterative process here, reacquainting myself with Blender and trying a whole bunch of different ways to play with polys. It took me a few hours to shake off the rust as I haven't actually used Blender in a while, but once I got my bearings, I found the best way to get the shapes I wanted was to use the proportional editing tool to make some really natural curves. I want the armor to taper towards the top, getting slightly narrower as the plates go up, as well as create a curve in two directions around the shoulder. To do this, I duplicate the original armor plate I've made, adjusting the rotation and scale slightly to fit, making sure the lower plates overlap the upper plates. For the top and bottom sections of the shoulder pads, I've added a small flare for visual interest, just to break it up. The previous shoulders I had used on my early Sakura Tau had the square nodes on the plates. I'd painted these in a pink tertiary color to include that on the models, but as I wanna get closer to the samurai aesthetic, I've decided to create some ropes to actually bind these plates together instead. With some remeshes and cleanup, we have some pretty nice looking braided cord holding this samurai shoulder pad together. As a finishing touch, I asked Jen to make me a vectored image of a cherry blossom. And then I converted this into a mesh, creating a Sakura logo from the SVG file. I extruded it and cleaned it up to make a nice emblem for the center of the shoulder pads. With the core design down, I made some variants by introducing some new lore to my Sakura. I created small tags that would be tied onto their shoulder pads, reminiscent of the messages left at Japanese shrines. For the Sakura, they carry the names of their fallen brethren. Spending so long away from Tao homeworlds, the Sakura take up and wear these names and messages for their fallen until such time as they can return home where they lay the tags to rest. If a warrior comes across a comrade who has tags of their own, they take these up as well, with many storied campaign veterans returning home with dozens of such wishes to be left at the homeworlds and families of their fallen comrades. I love this heartfelt and somber addition to the Sakura, and I'm really happy with how these turned out in the design as well. With the variants and details established, including an alternate curved top plate for heavier shock infantry, I'm ready to do a test print and show the gang what I've done. I want to find all these cool chassis parts that I can make an even cooler hero out of. So I'm just having a little dabble, a couple of poses, and I think I have a really cool idea. I want him to be striding forwards on a tactical rock, uh, holding aloft a drawn katana. Dave has some ideas for that, so I thought, oh yeah, I could, you know, open the possibility. So we'll see what he can do, and I think it's gonna be really cool either way. I'm gonna get ahead and start building that. The helmet itself, I'm not gonna do any additions to. It's gonna be completely vanilla structurally. That's because I want to do some really cool freehand on it at the end. It'll make a really nice splash of color, and hopefully we'll make a really cool motive for the Sakura as well. So I'm about halfway through building this little fire blade, and I've made a bit of discovery. And this ethereal has this really big 
meaty chess piece. However, I've discovered it just slots straight onto the chess piece of the Fire Warrior. That makes him look really bulky and armored, so I'm just gonna stick that straight on. It'll look really unique and that's awesome. Also, since that basically makes the ethereal completely unbuildable, I'm gonna take a few more parts from him and that'll be a really nice little addition to all over the Fireblade. So while Murray is busy at work making up his special character for Dave, I'm gonna go ahead and make some of the troops. Now that I have Sisters of Battle, I'm super thankful that the instructions have kind of been updated and they're so much easier to follow. That being said, there was a lot of customization when it came to building these tower. However, we knew the shoulder pads and the heads would be replaced, so I didn't bother adding too much onto them. Now that's all done, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys what they look like now before we head over to Dave and see what he's up to. Murray, Jen, how have you gone? Good. Yeah. Jen, you've made two breaches and two fire warriors. Yes. They're looking really good. Thanks for that. No worries. And Murray, what have you done? I've oh. made a fire blade. Oh, you've made conversions. Oh, this is so cool. I, you know what? I love the arm, but uh, would you be offended if I cut his hand off and gave him a giant katana up in the sky? No, I thought there was a possibility. So that's, uh, that's why it's there. This is going to be so <laughs> cool. Uh, well, I've actually sculpted and printed the first pieces of these. We've got the shoulder pads. Yeah. So if you could put them onto the models and see if there's any changes I should make, any scale changes, any little shifts, then I'm going to be able to make those changes and we can kind of get the perfect pieces. So have at it. All right, you got a couple of different sizes. Good boy, he's done the thing. <laughs> what, that looks cool. <laughs> you printed a couple sizes, you've done this before, you know yeah. you want to try different sizes. Big, medium, small, and it looks like small is the really, really nice fit. It, it's the most suiting to both the aesthetic and the original shoulder pads in terms of scale and size. So that's what we're gonna go with and you have a couple of changes you want to make. Yeah, in seeing it on the model, I think it's got a little bit too much of a curve in the shoulder pad, which makes it a little bit difficult to fit. So I'm gonna flatten some of those segments out, just get it a little bit straighter. It always looks different digitally to how it comes out on the model. I'm gonna do those changes and reprint them, but you're gonna get started painting. Yeah, uh, the shoulder pad can go on last as with everything else, so I'm just gonna start painting. Time to fix those shoulder pads and make a katana. Pushing outside the boundaries of what a miniature YouTube channel can do, creating our very own custom parts is only possible thanks to the amazing support of our sponsor MSI. MSI have been a huge and long time supporter of their channel and their awesome laptops power everything we do at the studio. One of the reasons we lean on laptops such as the Prestige Evo 13 is due to the dynamic nature of our work. We are constantly moving between studios, upstairs, downstairs and working remotely. And this machine weighs under a kilo, making it perfect for rapid workshopping. By using a laptop, I've been able to work directly alongside Murray and Jen, tweaking the scale and dimension of my shoulder pads to make sure they fit really nicely on the miniature. I've increased the width of the panels on the top part of the shoulder plates, as well as reducing the overall curve across the shoulder. With Wi-Fi 6E and Thunderbolt ports, I've not had to compromise on connectivity on the go. We work extensively on media servers and I've been getting great speeds no matter where I am in the building. I've been really impressed with how well this compact laptop, the Prestige Evo 13, has handled my 3D modeling. With the integrated graphics on my 13th gen Intel i7 processor, keeping up with my low to medium poly modeling. As a lightweight portable notebook, this is a sure sign of how far things have come with technology. While those parts print, I can get to work brainstorming my next bits. Taking full advantage of the 16 by 10 golden ratio display on the Evo 13, which allows me to maximize my space and workflow in programs like Blender, even on a compact notebook. If you'd like to check out our awesome sponsors, MSI, and see how a laptop could improve your creative workflow, check out the links in our description. But while I wait for my 3D prints, it's time to check in and see how Murray and Jen are going with the painting. Let's go. All right, I've just finished priming the Fireblade Gray, but it's not actually the gray I want to use as a base coat. So I'm gonna grab an airbrush and quickly just 
tone the gray down to the proper one that I want. So I'm gonna get that ready to basically start working with the brush. Let's go. Murray. Are you, are you watching oh. your favorite YouTube creator? I am. He's got some really nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> so the first stage will be making a gray zenithal to create the armor. It's a really nice effect and it helps to really create an army quickly. So we're going to start with that and then add detail. So when Dave came up with the paint scheme originally, he wanted it to be fast and effective. This meant using contrast paints, which is actually a paint I really enjoy using. And since we started with the light gray, the contrast goes on really well. We started painting the fatigues first because it is the messiest part of the model. So that's just gonna be a nice heavy wash of green. And I'm gonna go ahead and make two nice coats of this just to get the really nice color in there. Next stage is to get a brown wash and just pin drop all of the crevices in the armor panels. We dropped these into the recesses so it gave off a nice little shade. This process can be a little bit messy but you can always go back over the top to fix up any of the wash that's overflowed. So for the next part in this process we had to paint some things black. These were mostly leather parts on the models as well as parts of their guns and we can't forget their lovely toenails. For both the black areas and the grey armour, we're going to mix in successively lighter shades of grey and with the armour we're going to add up to white. This will create a really crisp highlight on all the nice sharp armour panels. And for that little pop of colour we added on some pink metallics. These are some really nice paints by CL75 that Dave loved this project and these will go into all the bolt like areas that are on the tower weapons. And for a final flourish we're going to go in with a red, painting in all the fun little details, accent panels and little markings. Then we'll highlight that up to a pink. The updated shoulder pads printed wonderfully and I brought in the fresh prints. Okay, so it's the next day. I've pretty much painted up the infantry and I'm moving on to putting on those little details that Dave printed out. And I have a couple of the shoulder pads here and I gotta say the detail on these is incredible. These are some amazing pieces of armor and Dave has put a lot of love into them. And I really love the little cherry blossoms and even the rope detail is really good. So if you want to get some of these for yourself, you can sort of see in there how much detail you're going to get with these shoulder pads and there's a variety as well. I think I want to put the ones with the curved edges on my breeches and I think I just want to put the original designs on the fire warriors. So I have all my shoulder pads here, so it's time to paint them up and we're going to put them on the towel. Whee! So in a very rare opportunity, we get to plug something we made ourselves. If you would like to pick up any of the Tau Sakura bits that you have seen today, you can head onto our website. It's tabletoptime.com. If you like the Sakura Sept and you'd love to do some Japanese themed minis in the future, you can pick up the shoulder pads, the katanas, and the back banners on our website. It's tabletoptime.com. We'll be launching these with 10% off for the first week they're up. And after that, they will go onto regular sale on the website. Anything you grab on the Tabletop Time website is a huge support to the channel. So we appreciate you checking them out. And also it's a huge support to me who feels really excited and confident and cool that people are actually going out there and 3D printing and painting things that I designed, which is just super cool. So thank you so much if you do go and grab them, it would mean a lot. Murray and Jen look like they're getting close to finishing their paint job. So I'm gonna get a move on and make some katanas. On my original Sakura, I used a file called the Tautana, but I want my Sakura bits to feel far more uniquely my own and usable on a whole range of models. This means designing a bit more of a traditional katana and sheath. A really iconic element of the katana is the gentler curve. It's often worth noting that in digital form, details look clunkier and almost cartoony as they need to be exaggerated. But when printed at scale, these are going to look great. I started with the sheath, adding an extruded area on either end to give it some detail. Importantly, I found that adding katanas to towel models is quite difficult due to their massive shoulder pads and quite squat proportions. The hilt of this blade would often clash with the elbow or shoulder, making it impossible to position naturally. To fix this, I've decided to add some straps to the sheath, allowing my blades to hang lower on the hip and thus avoid some of these clashes. I detailed these out with some crisscross rope sections and then added a sculpted tassel for where it would join onto the belt. To put the finishing touch on the scabbard, I also reused that Sakura emblem, placing it on the side. I made the katana by echoing the curve of the scabbard, ensuring it would fit smoothly into the sheath. I also added a tapered point, but was careful to keep the geometry thick. While this looks quite wide digitally, this will be printed for minis, so any thinner and it will be far too fragile. For the pommel, once more the cherry blossom would come in handy, but this time I extruded it out and modified some of the geometry. Experienced blender designers would be cringing at the end guns and awful geometry, but really these issues literally make no difference to 3D printing, and only matter for using the assets in different formats, which we have no intention of doing. As long as we have some nice manifold edges, we're golden. With that core design established, I made a bunch of variants. 
including some with a secondary blade or tanto. This is a common backup weapon for samurai and could also be seen as an option for sergeants and squad commanders who really like to bond over knives. This did leave the greatest challenge of the entire project, the hand. Murray had created an awesome pose with a fire blade pointing to the sky, but this was just begging for a heroically raised sword. To do this, I needed to sculpt my first organic thing ever. I used a rough blob and manipulated it with my hands until it formed something like a hand, and then made some pill-shaped objects to work as the joints of the fingers. With all these in place, scaled, and then fused together, I remeshed the object and went back to the sculpting tab. Going back and forth with the clay strips tool and also the crease tool, adding and subtracting detail and then smoothing it over, I worked iteratively until I created a three-fingered monster hand I was happy with. Hopefully it looks good on the mini. I also bullied this and sliced it in a few different ways to make sure there were different angles it could join onto the wrist. Let's fast forward and find out if it worked. And through the power of video editing, we have the 3D printed katanas. There you go, Jen, have fun. I can't wait to chop up tiny people with my tiny katanas. What do you think? These look amazing. Um, I saw you designing these before and I'm really impressed. These are really, really cool. And I actually am really impressed you did a hand to an organic object. Yes, that was a big challenge, but I think it's turned out well and maybe, just maybe with a bit of luck printed at the perfect scale. So good luck with those. I am going to go and make some back banners for the Sakura. Moving on to the next bit that Dave had printed was these awesome looking katanas. I painted these up using the same color scheme as the infantry, but included black on the handles where they'd be attaching to the belt. There were a couple of Sakura motifs that were added as well, and I wanted to make sure that these were done in the pink metallic color. To start these back banners, I would first need to create a pole. This was created with a simple cylinder, which I then extruded some areas of to create some detail. Adding the classic spirit level bauble to the top also made a crossbar with a little bit more of a high tech flare. I then used the sculpting tool and morphed some cylinders to create some nice little fabric straps that would connect to the banner itself. Now for creating variants with the banner, I actually had an idea. Rather than trying to hand sculpt a whole bunch of different poses, I would let physics sims do the work for me. So I created some vertex groups, pinning vertices for the banners where they would connect onto the pole. With this done, I created a wind force field and then started to play with cloth physics sim. I could run some animations and get the exact ripples that I wanted in the fabric naturally, then bake that frame of animation into the model itself, creating a whole bunch of copies. With this done, I simply extruded out the fabric sheet, added some flares and details, and then where the shape was particularly dynamic, I just moved those attachment points slightly to match the way the wind was blowing. This meant that every single one of my fabric banners was realistically flapping in the breeze, which I just think is awesome. It also allowed me to create a few variants relatively quickly. And this is a really cool trick to get some dynamic looking models. With these base designs, I can print these out at a few different scales and see which one is going to fit correctly for the model. After my very first test prints, I decided the one change I'd need to make is just make that bottom connecting point to the model slightly smaller so it fits really neatly. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with these for the production models. And it's time for Jen and Murray to paint them up and us to see some finished Sakura. When it came to painting my extra parts, I of course went ahead and just gave them a little extra love, something worthy of giving to a character. Since of course this is a paint scheme designed to batch paint armies, you want to give just a little bit extra love to your characters because they're the ones you're gonna look at and deserve the most love. What this means in practice is basically taking up the highlights just a little bit further and making everything blend nicely. It's okay if the rank and file troops are a little bit rough, but just spend that extra time on the characters and it'll improve the quality of the entire army. Otherwise, I took the exact same approaches Jen and added the emblem onto the banner. You can see in the banner it's cropped but the five points of this rising sun represent the five expansion spheres of the Tau Empire. After that we added some technical effects to the base to create the dirt, then absolutely went to town adding colourful tufts, adding the cherry blossom effects that Dave had found for his army, and once that was all done I think it's time to show off our own personal additions to Dave's Sakura Tau set.
We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our wonderful patrons over on Patreon. It's because of you guys we get to make awesome videos like this one, so your support is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to become a member of our Patreon, the links are in the description. It gives you access to our miniatures Discord where you can post your works in progress, general discussion, and ask for advice, including submitting into our monthly mini review, which is a great amount of fun. We get to see everything everyone is working on, give varying levels of feedback as requested, and just generally enjoy the hobby with everyone in the community. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out and lets us know you enjoyed this video. Murray, that was so awesome. You've done such a good job with the Fireblade. I love it. That was really fun. I enjoyed uh, jumping in with your little chapter, your, your set. This is the first time someone else has made Sakura, which, you know, Jazz has got a lot with his space bears, but for me, it's really cool to have someone else make my custom army. So thank you so much. Uh, Jen as well, but she's run off to um, run my hobby store for me. So <laughs> uh, it's just me and Murray saying goodbye to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you again to MSI and their Evo 13 Prestige laptop. Fantastic computer and it's been really good to sculpt on and super lightweight. Please go check out the links in the description. They have a sale on right now. Don't miss out. And as a final note, if you would like to grab the 3D printed parts, just go to the website, it's tabletoptime.com. 10% off for one week only. Awesome. Thanks, we want to go paint my towel. <laughs>